Kia ora, Year 12 and 13. This is a question from today's Scholarship Calculus Sessions. And this one is really to help out the people who couldn't come in because of COVID Level 2 from other schools. So this video is going to go pretty slowly. If you're watching this and you usually find the Scholarship Calc videos um, a bit too slow already, then this one is going to be even slower. So maybe just skip it um, or speed it up. We've got a conics question here, and it's all about a parabola. So we've got a point on the parabola, y squared is equal to 4ax. And over here I've put in the bits from the formula sheet because they're really going to help us out. So the main equation for a parabola is in Cartesian form is y squared equals 4ax. The focus is also given to us, and we're going to use that in this question. We're told that ac is the tangent to the parabola at point a. So a has coordinates x0 and y0, and c is this point here on the x-axis. ac is the tangent, and so you can already see that probably finding the coordinates of these points is going to be important. To get the x-intercept here, we're going to need to differentiate the parabola equation and find the gradient, and then get the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so already you probably want to be thinking that we'll be using implicit and that we'll be using this equation here, right, the point gradient equation. And to use this, we need to know three things. We're going to need to know the gradient at point A, and we're going to need to know the coordinates of point A. All right, so F is the focus of the parabola. So f is here, and the coordinates of f are a0. b is the point here on the y-axis. And angle BAF is formed by joining up points B and F. So angle BAF is this whole angle here. We have to show that that tangent line bisects angle BAF. So what we're trying to show is that this angle here and this angle here are equal. So I'm going to write some of this down and then we're going to look at how we might do this. So we need to show that angle BAC is equal to angle CAF. But there's something that's going to help us out with this a lot and that's parallel line rules from back in year 9. So let's draw in some lines and see what can help. So there's my first one. Now let's extend out the line through AB. Now we're looking at angles, the angles that I've marked on there. So we're going to look at that tangent line and now think of it as a transversal through two parallel lines. Once you see this, I think you start to spot what we're trying to show. We want to show that this angle here and this angle here are the same. But we know that this angle down here must be the same as this one because they're alternate angles on parallel lines. So we can write down something like this. Angle BAC is equal to angle ACF. And we need to explain why. Alternate angles, parallel lines, are equal. Now hopefully what you're seeing is that if we're working with this angle and this angle, we can form a triangle and start working with that. So let's just mark in that triangle. Instead now of, of showing that these two are the same, we want to show that this one and this one are the same. But that will be true if that triangle is an isosceles triangle. So angle, let's be careful with our notation, angle ACF will equal angle, which one am I doing now, uh, CAF, if the triangle ACF is isosceles, because then I'll have the base angles of the triangle being equal. So what we've got to do now is we have to show that two side lengths are equal. We want to show that this side length and this side length are equal. Now they're not drawn to look particularly equal, but it turns out we can prove that they are. Remember the diagrams are never to scale. 
what do I need to do? Well, I, I need to find the coordinates of those points. And I've got the coordinates of the focus, and I've nearly got the coordinates of point A. So let's start with finding the coordinates of point A. So A is x0, y0, but we'd like to get this in terms of x because we're going to find the equation of the tangent line. So y squared is equal to 4ax, y is equal to the square root of 4ax, which is 2 root ax. So at the point um, x0, y0 will equal 2 root a x0. So we've got that. So that's going to be very useful. Okay, now it's time to figure out part, the point C, and that's where most of the work is going to take place. We need to differentiate using implicit, and then rearrange and get the equation of the tangent line. So we're starting out with y squared is 4ax. So this is what we get here. That gives me dy by dx is equal to 4a over 2y, which is 2a over y. And now we're going to substitute in, um, so this is the gradient anywhere, but we're really only interested in it at that point back up here. Right? So we want the gradient here at point a, so we need to substitute in for my y value. So at a, we're going to have the gradient being 2a over y0, which is 2a over 2 root ax0. And that simplifies to give me this, root a over x0. So we are basically ready to go with our equation. Right? We've got y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0 y minus this is equal to my gradient times x minus x naught. Okay, cleaning this up, what do we get? Well, we get y equals, adding this to both sides, 2 root a x naught plus root a over root x naught x minus root a x naught. Okay, so I'm just expanding that. And that simplifies into mx plus c form to this. Okay, so that's the equation of the line. Now what do we need from that? Well, let's just have another look at the picture. So we need the coordinates of point c. Now remember this one here is a0. So the coordinates of point C are going to happen when y equals 0. That's the x-intercept. So 0 is equal to this. Solving that gives me negative root ax0 is equal to this. So finally, x is equal to negative root this times this over root a. And you can see that that cleans up to give me a very simple coordinate, which is the x value there is equal to negative x naught. So this is starting to look really nice. Let's put some of those values back onto my picture, and I'll just draw in that tangent line. So here, this point c is negative x naught 0, and this point here is a 0. Remember what we've got to show now is that we've got an isos triangle. So we're trying to show that the length of this is equal to the length of this. And this point here is a is x0, and then um, 2 root a x0. So what do I have to do now? Well, we have to find cf. cf is the distance between those two points, which is simply a plus x0, or I'll just write it the other way around, x0 plus a. How do we get the distance between f and a? Well, that's level 2 coordinate geometry. We're going to apply Pythagoras' theorem. So distance af is equal to this. Right, the difference in the x values squared plus the difference in the y values squared. Expanding that out, 
gives me, whoops, x naught squared minus 2a x naught plus a squared plus 4a x naught. Right, just square in this. Now this is starting to look great because we've got a perfect square here. We've got this, x naught squared plus 2a x naught plus a squared. Remember we're trying to get the two sides equal and that's about to happen. So x naught plus a squared, square rooted, gives me x naught plus a, which is equal to cf. So it'd be nice to write some, some good logic down now, and so it goes like this. So therefore, af equals cf, therefore triangle caf is isosceles. That means that the base angles are equal. And that means that angle BAC is equal to angle FCA because of what we had above. So alternate angles parallel lines are equal, which means that angle BAC is equal to angle FAC, therefore the line AC bisects angle BAF. So there you go. Um, I think that's a, quite a hard question to see your way into, and I talked about this quite a lot in class this afternoon, and so did Miss Young this morning. Um, if you don't see the parallel line thing, there are other ways to do it, and Ning has done it a different way, and I will try and um, email out his working to you as well. But it's just yet another example of where a really, really simple idea from junior level maths can take you a long way, but you have to have the algebraic tools down. So hopefully what you've got from this is you've got to be really confident with implicit differentiation and with some of these coordinate geometry skills. So let me know if this has made sense. I'm not sure how the sound quality is going to be because I'm not using my mic. Um, and email me if you've got any questions. And thanks for watching and hopefully things will go back to normal soon. Keep your fingers crossed.